Good evening and thank you for joining us. If you'll please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, thank you for joining us this evening. We have a full house, which is great to see. All right, first on our agenda is to adopt this evening's agenda. I move to adopt the agenda as presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, excellent, thank you. Next, uh, part of our favorite part of the meeting, a special recognition. Uh, the first is School Counselors and Social Workers Appreciation. And for this, I will, um, we have a proclamation that we are going to have Director Perkins read. Technology is... State of Washington Proclamation. Whereas school counselors are employed in public and private schools to help students reach their full potential, and whereas school counselors are actively committed to helping students explore their abilities, strengths, interests, and talents as these traits relate to career awareness and development, and whereas school counselors help parents focus on ways to further the educational, personal, and social growth of their children, and whereas school counselors work with teachers and other educators to help students explore their potential and set realistic goals for themselves, and whereas school counselors seek to identify and utilize community resources that can enhance and complement comprehensive school counseling programs and help students become productive members of society, and whereas comprehensive developmental school counseling programs are considered an integral part of the educational process that enables all students to achieve success in school, now therefore I, Jay Inslee, Governor of the State of Washington, do hereby proclaim February 4th through the 8th 2019 as School Counseling Week in Washington. And I encourage all people in our state to join me in this special observance. Great. John, do we have somebody that's representing us this evening? From I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> I think a couple people coming up. Great. And while they're making their way up, I just want to um, recognize all the counselors for the amazing work that they do. Um, you know, over the last decade, we have seen more needs come into the public education system than ever before, probably in the history of our country. And the variety of work that our counselors have taken on and continue to take on on a daily basis um, is, is just amazing. And to see the work that our caring staff do in and out every single day and beyond the school day, and at those times where we have our smart teams that come together is when Sorrowfully, our staff really shine, and we've had all too many opportunities for that to occur. But when I see them at work with kids really hurting and in need, you see the true quality of individuals that we have in our district, and I want to thank them. I'll turn it over okay. to you guys now. Thank you. I'm Carl Smith, Assistant Director of Student Services, and I'm here to acknowledge and recognize some elementary counselors. Each year we ask principals to nominate counselors who have excelled in their position. And this year we have, I think, five present and nine were nominated. Um, so I'd like to call them up if I can, but I want to hand this over to Ruben first because he may have some of this. Thank you, Carl. Good evening, I'm Ruben Dorndorf, Director of School Services. Um, and along with the elementary side, um, I would like to recognize several um, phenomenal secondary counselors as well for their work that they're, they've been doing. Um, in addition to uh, uh, the proclamation and what Dr. Steed shared, um, I think what stands out about these individuals um, in my work, in their buildings, and throughout the district um, is really their leadership that they're demonstrating both in their schools and across the district with their, with their colleagues. And so I really appreciate uh, the level of professionalism and leadership and their collaborative nature. So if we announce your name, please come up and introduce yourself to the board when you get the microphone. Lisa Punk from Harmony Elementary School. Emily Kirsten Grip from Endeavor. Rena Luton Wall from Burton. Tiffany Morrison from Riverview. 
did I miss any of the elementary people? <laughs> yeah. And then if I can please have Kimberly Curry uh, from Y East Middle School, Dina Uzer from Union High School, Leslie King from Frontier, Heather Leonard, also from Frontier Middle School, Bobby Arnold from Evergreen High School, and Erin Drummond from Pacific was not able to join this evening, but I'd like to recognize her as well. Thank you for everything that you do for our students every day. I know, even though my kids have been out of school for a little while, um, <coughs> when they were in school, counselors made a huge difference for them, <laughs> and it mattered a lot for our family. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Plus, we know that the work is more and more challenging every day. We have you know, more and more new crises that are coming up, and so we thank you for all of those efforts to keep our kids safe and secure in the schools and keeping them wanting to come back. Thank you. And social and emotional learning and development. Are, sorry. It's I, all good. I didn't want to cut in on anyone else. So. But social emotional learning and development are so critical for us in the district. I mean, that's been a real focus for us. And so the, the work that you're doing as counselors and social workers, I mean, you're right on the forefront of you know being right there for the kids and helping them. And so, yeah, we as a board really applaud the work that you do. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This, this hits me a little more personally because I have a child who has needed, desperately needed, an elementary level counselor at one point, and, and the two um, counselors who advised us and aided him were indispensable in that moment uh, to help him uh, finally feel comfortable at school. It took years, uh, but those first few, um, those first few months when he began to feel so afraid, they were there. And I appreciate it. It's good work. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to acknowledge um, two people are not here tonight. I you turned off. <laughs> um, Lonnie Paranto, who is a clinical psych who works at a 49th Street Academy, has also been nominated for this award. And Tim Sunkel, um, from Fishers uh, is also nominated, and Judy's going to come up and sing a song on his. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but Judy showed up to support because Tim couldn't tonight. So thank you very much. You guys are awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, and next is the Evergreen Award, which we started last year, and it is very popular, and um, the board loves it. We love this night when we get to recognize our employees. So I'm going to turn this over to Superintendent Speech. And I'm going to turn it right over to <laughs> Janae Gomes. the audience to explain what that is for those that have not been here. Um, this is the award for employees that um, is nominated on through all of the staff members and it's recognizing um, that hard work um, that they're putting forth, the relationships they're building with the students and we just really want to take the opportunity and thank them, acknowledge them, recognize them and um, there's three different awards. There's classified, certificated, and the third one is a group or an administrator. And this evening we will um, recognize classified cert and admin. 
So uh, thank you for that. And the first one this evening, we'll start with Classified. And this is Christina Brown with Cascadia. Mansell is going to come up and uh, speak and say a few words. I'm Mark Mansell, I'm the director of Cascadia Tech, and uh, we are blessed to serve um, uh, so many students across the county. Cascadia Tech provides uh, career technical education uh, opportunities for all nine districts in Clark County, and so we are really blessed to have a quality staff, and one of those staff members, Christina, uh, is uh, serves as our student success advocate. Talk about being on the front lines of, of helping those students that have the highest need. Christina took on this role two years ago. This is her second year in that, and it's been phenomenal, the impact that she's had in the lives of, of our kids. Uh, everything from uh, basic supports, uh, whether it's a, a gas card or food or clothes, to help them, but she also works on attendance and through those conversations tries to remove the barriers that uh, uh, prevents kids from getting to our school. And some of those barriers are significant because they're coming from all over the county. And so through her effort, her leadership, uh, we've actually seen uh, our attendance go up from 90% to almost 94% as a result of uh, many things, but her leadership in that role. She's also been part of Camp Cascadia, which is another effort that we started this past summer to help kids with uh, who were behind in credits and also uh, had attendance issue. And uh, as a result of that program, uh, those kids have had phenomenal improvements. And many of these come right back to Christina and her leadership uh, with kids, but also with the staff. So on behalf of the staff, uh, we're super excited to have you uh, be recognized for this wonderful award. You're well deserving of it, so congratulations. It looks like there's a few people from Cascadia here tonight, and do you have family that joined you? Call them. <laughs> <laughs> First school family. Yeah, right. It's just so important. It's really neat to support you. Uh, before we move on to the next one, I just wanted to actually take a brief moment just to um, share with you that Mark is going to be retiring from Cascadia, and he's done such an amazing job in moving it um, to a new level. The support, the work that you do, oh, we're really going to miss you and. Because Tonight, I just wanted to make sure that we acknowledge and recognize him. Um, so thank you. Thank you. I echo what Jenny was saying that three years ago, when we had kind of a late departure of our um, director of Cascadia, Mark was basically um, asked or voluntold or <laughs> strong armed into stepping in and said he would give us three years and really has done a commendable job in that role of stabilizing and expanding programs and improving upon the school and providing um, very sy systemic structures for the long-term health of Cascadia even so much so as working very hard right now to see if we can get some legis or work from the legislature to fund new facilities to replace the oldest skill center buildings in the state at what is the largest skill center and probably the most underfunded skill center historically with capital money and Mark's been a major driving force and hopefully we'll leave your legacy with the buildings just like you have with the staff and the people. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, next, we will recognize Certificated um, Evergreen Award, and this is Sybil Boiter with uh, Pacific Middle School, and Heather uh, Thiessen's going to come up and say a few words. Good evening. In the course of our work in education, we quickly come to realize the value of the people we interact with. We look for individuals who spark joy, risk greatly, and above all, believe in the potential of all the students we serve. Sybil is one of these individuals. In my almost three years at Pacific, I have come to know and appreciate the compassion, perseverance, 
and determination that she brings to her work. She embodies the Viking way and I'm honored to work alongside her each day. I wanted to read the, um, the nomination because Sybil doesn't know what it says. And I think um, our teacher librarian, Cindy McLean, really, um, well, you'll see. <laughs> I would love to nominate Sybil Boyder as the recipient of the Evergreen Award. Sybil is that one person in the building who consistently volunteers to lead and or help out with programs that support students academically, physically, and emotionally. She is also a beacon of light for the staff here at Pacific. She always has a smile for everyone. She is positive and uplifting, and she has boundless energy for spearheading the work throughout the building. Sybil has been a consistent, integral part of the Pacific Food Pantry since it started several years ago. She comes in during her free time to fill the bags for Friday pickup by students. She shops for the needed groceries. She stocks the shelves and rotates the stock. Basically, she does the whole job of a team of people. The pantry couldn't survive without her. Sybil has also volunteered to get the PBIS training going in our building. She went to all of the initial trainings for the program. She began doing the professional development training for our staff to get us on board and take baby steps to begin implementation. Now she continues to support the staff individually and at PD during staff meetings to get year one in full swing. She is a one-woman cheering squad for our kids, dancing with the flash mob on Hugs Wednesday mornings, greeting them at the door with a smile, and helping to make sure every student has a personal contact every day. Whenever we need help or an extra hand, we call Sybil. She is a huge part of the heart and soul of Pacific Middle School. We can do our work without you. No. It's so important. We can't do this work without our families and our spouse and its that support. And it's important for them to be recognized as well. Our third uh, nomination this evening is um, administration. And it's Holly Long. Holly, if you can come up. And Jay Buno is going to come up and say a few words. Holly's husband uh, is a basketball coach this evening, and because of our weather and some of the uh, snow, that there's a makeup game, so her family is there. So I'm nominating Cabinet to stand up and be those supporters. <laughs> yeah, because Holly has been an integral piece of our world uh, with the outbreaks and the measles, and uh, she has kept us all sane, and so we're going to be that support for you tonight. So uh, I, I get the privilege of uh, talking a little bit about Holly. Um, I will talk about the measles. I, I really don't want to. Um, and, and Holly's outfit is. <laughs> uh, 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 I get the privilege of working with Holly every day. Holly uh, supervises and supports our nursing and health services and oversees 504 and um, works with ADA for both adults and, and, and students and uh, and works on immunizations uh, for the district and more importantly puts up with me every day. Um, she uh, does an amazing job of figuring out how to give students support. I mean, I will literally say, we need a nurse and she says, I don't have one and then an hour later comes up with one and figures out a plan for her kids. Um, and she uh, had an amazing opportunity to uh, engage with the Department of Health in the last few weeks. Uh, and uh, she spearheaded the district's support and, and did an amazing job with responding to the measles outbreak and uh, um, just amazing amount of work. I remember the first day I called her, she was at a basketball game. In the background, I could hear the band playing, or, you know, the crowd cheering, and she steps out and began uh, a weekend's worth of work, literally, in figuring out how to um, respond, and, and did an amazing job at it. Um, and so, it's my privilege to um, acknowledge Holly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Trying to just expand a little bit on that, uh, Holly is, um, during this outbreak, is the sole person for the students, the staff, 
She's fielding questions nonstop. Her phone, I'm surprised she still answers it. <laughs> always pleasant, always uh, with patience. And there's just so many questions and unanswered and the wonderings, and she just led that um, amazingly. And so thank you for everything that you've done. It's, uh, not, it's not often that something you're working on is making the national news every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. I'd like to throw in that I, I've talked to Dr. Melnick several times over the last several weeks, and one of the things that he wanted to stress to me was that Holly was the best school nursing coordinator he has ever worked with, and said that what she did for Evergreen was amazing. So he gave you his gold star of commendation. That's really nice. So again, this evening, all of these uh, individuals are being recognized for their outstanding work that they do in our schools and with our students and our staff. And uh, we could get a picture with all of you with them. And uh, thank you to the support of the schools that are here and families, and I uh, appreciate that. with winter weather. We'll continue to monitor that. I also wanted to thank transportation for getting up dark and early with me on all of these mornings. We're up at 4 o'clock checking things and driving around and trying to make decisions. 
Last week was a little dicey because at 6.30 we looked fine and by 7 o'clock I got a call from transportation saying we weren't getting any buses up McKenzie Hill, which was just slush at 6.30. Um, so things changed on us so rapidly Tuesday, that's why we had somewhat of a late closure. But again, thanks to all the individuals who make that happen and our maintenance crews who are out there doing their best to get the parking lot, sidewalks all cleared for salted. Um, and then from a capital project standpoint, we're continuing to make great progress. Um, we did interviews for the Mountain View General Contractor and we'll hopefully be awarding that fairly soon. Um, we've got to get doing the final parts on that. And then last, or to the last week, the week before, we had our equity team look at the design drivers on equity and access for our schools. Um, it's, we did an initial one back in November, but had very low attendance, so we wanted to redo it with our equity team, had them looking at it, and it was refreshing as we were reporting out on the things that needed to be included in the design to have them describe many of the components that are currently in our prototypical elementary schools. So that was very um, positive, and that was the last of those design driver meetings. And that's all I've got for tonight. Great, thank you. All right, next is a focus on student results. Um, we have a results for citizenship monitoring report. This is a first reading. I'm going to turn this over to Superintendent Speech. And I'm going to turn this over to Matt Handelman, our Chief Academic Accountability Officer, who's been compiling all the data on R4. And he'll walk you through um, what we did, or what we discussed in the workshop two weeks ago. And hopefully it'll come up on the screen so that it's not just droning on like I've been doing lately. Like it was there. I gotcha. It disappeared. I did fill out a sheet on the new boardroom today, and one of the things I said is we need a less complex and more reliable laptop system for projecting <laughs> or displaying in board meetings. Elizabeth's got it. Right. <laughs> Good evening. Hi. Um, Matt. Uh, hi. So as you know, uh, as, as Dr. Steve said, we've been compiling uh, all of this information. It's not just me. Um, James can't mind played a, a great role, as did a lot of other people in helping to put it together. As you know also from our conversations over the last year and a half and from recent workshop, uh, this is our first go at this. So we've been trying to figure out whether those indicators that we have, uh, have suggested to you as good uh, evidence of our work in the area of citizenship are indeed capturable, uh, measurable, um, and whether they're going to be the best moving forward for the district. So um, we've, we've put together what we have. You'll notice that there are a couple of gaps because there are places that we don't have the, the data yet, but um, we will go through this um, as deeply as you want to. I know you've seen it a couple of times. We've done it a couple of editions based on your input, um, especially um, uh, Rob Perkins' input at our workshop uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, again, the results policy uh, reads that students will understand, model, and advance the interconnectedness of individuals, cultures, and communities in their environment. So each of the subcategories um, that you see up on the screen have um, have these uh, evidence that, that you have sort of uh, given your nod to. Uh, some of them have to do with our uh, student report cards, so it's uh, adults who are reporting on this. Some of it has to do with our uh, SEL, or social emotional learning uh, survey from Panorama, which is student self-reporting. Uh, some of it has to do with, with uh, also our culture and climate survey and a number of other places. Uh, one thing I do want to make sure to point out to you um, is uh, on each of these, uh, there's either an O, which uh, uh, means that it's an outcome-based uh, piece of data, uh, or there, there are some that also have P's, like this one, which means it's process-based. In other words, it's not necessarily specific evidence um, uh, proof that, that it's happened, but it's, it's proof of our work or our students' work in those areas. So uh, again, the, the very first one has to do with the uh, practice duties and responsibilities um, and rights of citizenship in democratic society. Um, 
follow these percentages in this uh, in this top one, uh, or the, the first couple of them have to do with our student report card. Also with uh, student uh, uh, discipline data and our school-wide information uh, system. I don't think you want me to read all the numbers to you, but um, uh, if you have any questions along the way, uh, just stop me. Here's one of the ones that we have not figured out yet how to uh, determine our uh, students uh, who have registered to vote. Um, there's some very sensitive areas uh, within that, as we've talked about, um, and trying to, to uh, dig up that information. We are working on some processes that uh, we might be able to have in place within the next year. You'll notice this first process one just talks about um, the, the curricular areas where we have government taught, specifically around social studies and history. There's some overlap, as you see with uh, R2. In the successful transition, although we have some information about our special education students, um, we have recently subscribed to the National uh, Clearinghouse, which will get uh, beyond just this data that, that um, is uh, one of the indicators here. Uh, we'll have a lot of very interesting data that I'm sure you'll be interested to, to uh, dig into and see how our students are doing in terms of going to college, success in college. Um, there, uh, there are a lot of data points that are uh, aggregated and disaggregated. In the area of cultural competency, again, uh, some process or um, information about our coursework that we offer in different grade levels around cultural understanding. And then in terms of culturally compassionate, uh, culturally compassionate behavior, um, we have uh, some panorama data, again, the uh, social, emotional, and cultural climate surveys. Over on the right, uh, one addition that uh, you didn't see at the, uh, at the workshop was uh, that uh, table of national norms. Um, as we discussed, we can only do that at the uh, at the sort of topical level as opposed to the question level. Uh, so uh, there's a chart that's for, for each of them that shows how we're doing. Um, as we will acknowledge, we have plenty of room to grow as we do in a lot of areas, and that's why we're here. Um, continuous improvement. Oops. So more about uh, discipline, uh, HIV stands for harassment, intimidation, and bullying. Um, and again, those are, are reported by our manager of risk management and safety. So again, one of those places where we need to reach out and get information from others. Culturally re relevant instruction, section on that. Uh, again, these are all process oriented. And uh, again, that third column, you see a little bit of explanation of the data points. You can stop me if you have comments or questions. 4.3 students will be respectful and compassionate. Uh, this one spot. Uh, where there's a blank, we probably should have put an NA, but there, there's an explanation over in that third column uh, that there's not a question for the elementary students in that area, and that's why it's blank. Again, culture and climate survey. PBIS, or Positive Behavior Intervention Supports, is uh, key in this area. Again, process showing that we're, we're working to, uh, to help our students toward these goals. <coughs> 
more specifically around student behavior. Some of it is sort of a, a repeat in terms of the HIV data. It's just a, a different way to look at it in letter A there. Um, and this is one area that, uh, that specifically uh, Director Perkins was asking about at the workshop. And so we, gathered, we did gather um, some more information and uh, you might be interested to, to click into those two attachments that are uh, on the right hand side um, in terms of students being involved in service projects. There were a couple places that we dug in at your suggestion. More of student self-reporting from the Panorama SEL survey. And again, most of this is baseline. You know, as, as we go through the years, you'll be able to see how is it, how is it changing from year to year, uh, as long as we uh, keep uh, using the panorama survey. More outcomes based on the elementary report card. Four point four is one uh, I remember a couple summers ago spending quite a bit of time uh, in your conversations around how how to word this uh, in terms of uh, advocating for change and, and having that word appropriately advocate for change. Interesting uh, uh, in today's society um, as we continue to grapple with those things uh, at uh, the national level as well as the local level and in our schools need to be good role models there. Another one that I remember you spending quite a bit of time talking about the wording of um, students will be good stewards of their environment as opposed to necessarily the environment. So the world around them, so it's not just uh, the, the physical world or the, or the uh, nature as we might think of the environment, but all their surroundings and trying to find different ways. Again, information around the uh, recycling and there's information from Zeus Steinbrenner about uh, the, green, uh, the green schools. And then on another level, again, our social studies as opposed to looking at, at, at government or culturally uh, sensitive or culturally relevant uh, um, curriculum, this is around um, global exposure. So again, process-wise, we've gathered some information about that. So, long story short or short story long, that's the end of it. Are there any questions or comments about um, the monitoring report? I really appreciate, this was probably one of the more difficult ones to come up with evidence um, and how to how to actually prove that we're doing what we're doing and but it's such a key area for our students I mean in a, in a world that's getting so complex and can be so hard and to have our students be good citizens and good people um, we really have to be intentional about that social emotional learning and and so I appreciate what the thoughtfulness that's gone into trying to figure out ways to prove what we're doing and how we're doing it. So um, thank you for the effort. And I know it's kind of evolving and we're just at kind of baseline, but um, I know this has been one of the trickier ones. Agreed, and, and you know, one of the most important things, I and mean, we can do all the measuring we want to, but if we don't do, teaching around it, then it's, you know, it's just, you know, there's an expression just weighing the pay, right? Yeah. So we have to make sure, well, I was just talking with James Canton about that to, uh, yesterday. So so we need to make sure that we're considering how are we um, improving our efforts as adults to improve the outcomes for kids. And these were our to uh, talking topics that we took to our breakfast with the boards, a lot of these outcomes. So it, it was nice to have this data to present, you know, and ask them what they thought about the information that was coming back. So it was, it was great to have that to kind of show them, this is what's coming out of all of our schools. Thank you. Yeah, and I like having the numbers. I mean, I realize this is the the baseline year, uh, but a couple of things struck me. 
and we talked about this a couple weeks ago as well, but uh, I, I really like that look of the participation in ASB elections. And on this election night, it said 43%, uh, which I guess seems somewhat low, um, but I realize it's the, the baseline, and hopefully that can be improved upon um, in future years. The other thing that uh, struck me um, was the looking at the special education students and what was it, 68% uh, either were going on higher education or had a, you know, employment. And that was up from 63% the year before, which I think is great. And so obviously the trend is in the right direction. Those are two measurables that I really appreciate looking at uh, amongst others. So yeah, thank you. And the special ed is, is very, um, very high in, in relation to the rest of the state. So combinations for to Jay and his whole uh, crew working on that. Mm -hmm. I, I had just happened on uh, the correlation between membership in a service organization, a CTSO, um, and voting patterns uh, just a couple of months before uh, we had this conversation two weeks ago. And uh, I, I gathered that there was some um, verity to that research that you found. Well, uh, you know, again, we, we don't have the, necessarily the correlation of whether those students actually voted in the ASB elections, for example, or whether right. they're registered to vote. But uh, uh, it's certain, you know, Susan Dixon was, was all over right away. You know, I asked her the next day about, about what you asked about, and she was able to pull together the data pretty quickly. And, and uh, again, it'll be interesting, I think, to look longitudinally uh, at those students and, and the amount of participation we have because we, we we have some great programs which you know which have those clubs attached to them. And I've enjoyed every look I've had into things like We the People at, at Heritage High School and, and anecdotally um, I think it bears out. There was a lot of political participation a couple of years ago from Heritage graduates, um, even partisan participation that uh, sort of bears out the idea that membership and participation in these classes and the service organizations right. means something. Uh, keep me apprised of the research if you find it. Yeah. I'm very curious about that. Uh, and thank you for putting it together so quickly. Well, thanks to Susan Dixon. Again. Thank you, Susan, for putting it together. <laughs> So as Matt mentioned, we have three er or two areas on here with exception. One is the voter registration data. We still haven't come to terms with how to do that. And then the follow-up on our graduates through the National Clearinghouse that we won't have till this spring. So we'll bring that data back just as an addendum to this at that time. Um, and then also just a clarification under 44A1 that we had not specified what grade levels we um, were going to be having in writing and social studies um, for advocacy. And now that we've nailed that down and recommend that we would just change the verbiage within that to be 1 through 8 and 10 through 12. Um, so with that, I would recommend at this time that the board accepts the monitoring report for results policy R4 citizenship as presented for first reading and move forward for second reading as reasonable progress with noted exceptions. Thank you. So at this time, we will call on the audience for questions or comments regarding this um, monitoring report. All right, seeing none, then we will ask for a motion from the board. I recommend accepting the monitoring report for results policy R4. Uh, citizenship is presented for first reading uh, and moving forward for second re reading as reasonable progress with noted exceptions. Second. Great. So moving second, and then we'll open it up for additional board questions or comments. The only thing I want to say is, Matt, I think you said it right, it's continuous improvement that getting that baseline data and then moving forward and, and how we present it and how we keep working. And I like what Jimmy said, that we're already using it as a board team on the way we work with our uh, focus groups and some of our communication out to our students in the district. Oh, yeah, and how did that work out? Did that uh, spark a lot of conversation? Um, I know for me and Rob, I, and it sounds like potentially a lot of them, it's, that wasn't their results, that that was messed up the other schools. <laughs> I yeah, that was the pattern of the conversation. Yeah. It's like, it's not happening here, but I can totally believe it's happening. I think we had some really good conversation oh, around yeah. the one that Victoria and I did. With the kids. Yes. 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 With the students, yeah. 
Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had really good conversation with our students. Mm -hmm. We loved it. All right, any other questions or comments from the board? All right, then at this time, we will now take a vote to present R4 for a second reading. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Excellent. We'll bring that back uh, for a second reading on February 26th. All right, next up is board comments. Todd, you should probably say something. Nothing. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say something. This is my last board meeting, and uh, it's very sweet. Um, but personally, it's time. It personally, it's my time to, to move on. And uh, I was thinking. I think I started on board July of 2008. So it's been, I think, about 11 years. Uh, it's gone by in some ways fast. But when I think about my youngest child, our youngest child, my wife Elaine's here. She just finished fourth grade, and now she's a junior in college. So something has happened in that amount of time. Um, but what I'll remember most is how the team, and I'll say the collective team, board, superintendent, staff, have really pulled together during tough times. And I would say it was tough during uh, the Great Recession. I think it was like the first five years I was on the board. We were cutting that budget every year. Um, but the team pulled together to do what's best for kids. I, I really appreciated that. Um, also really appreciated six years ago when the Crestline Elementary School burned down. Um, it was just amazing how the, the staff and the community just pulled together to try to make an awful situation better for our kids. And so I know facing us going forward is a budget deficit. And so I have a lot of confidence in the team to be able to pull together again because it's a, it's a tough situation. Um, but with the board, superintendent, community, staff uh, trying to figure out the right priorities as well as um, making decisions on what's best for kids. I, mean, I think that would be the, you know, a, good, a good approach and they have full confidence in the team. And lastly, uh, what I'll remember most are the, the people. I've really enjoyed working with the current board members. Um, I've really enjoyed working with past board members. I've really enjoyed working with uh, Superintendent Speech as well as uh, Superintendent Dieter and uh, all the staff of the district. I mean, you've been tremendous to help me personally, um, and so, and, and the board as well, but I'm just talking about me now, so. <laughs> but but I, I, I really appreciate it. You've all been a part of my life, and uh, for that, I'll be forever grateful, and I'm grateful for having the honor to be able to serve on the school board for the last few years, so thank you very much. I've been on the board the longest with Todd, and um, it's going to be, I, we're going to miss you a lot. Um, Todd it has been the steady, just even-keeled voice on the board, logical, um, kind, just a very sweet soul that um, I've never heard him raise his voice. Never, never seen him get ruffled by anything. Um, always kind of a voice of reason, which I have appreciated so many times. Um, and truly always had the best for the children and the people in our community. Um, never somebody with a ax to grind or a special agenda, except maybe food and music. Um, <laughs> What's wrong with that? I always love Love eating with Todd because he just loves loves everything. You know, loves wherever we we're at, wherever we're we're gonna be, and just always such a pleasant, happy person to be around. And I'm I'm just gonna really miss you. I appreciate everything you've done for us on the board. Yeah, thanks, Vic. I agree, um, Todd. I have loved watching your passion for the students in our district and. Um, just the excitement that you get when you watch them present something to us, if it's music, if it's STEM related, whatever it is, graduations, uh, it's been just 
fun to um, have you as a part of our board. I've learned a lot from you. Victoria said it best, your voice of reason. Um, sometimes you put things in perspective for all of us that we need to, we need to hear, and we're definitely going to miss that. I also want to thank both you and your family, Elaine. Um, it's such a time commitment being on the school board. I don't know that people realize that, um, but <laughs> you've always been dedicated to everything that you've done, and thank you for that. And thank you, Elaine, for letting us have him for so many years. Thanks, Julie. You're doing this by seniority? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'll say it aloud when you called and announced to me uh, on the phone when you were calling each of us weeks ago, weeks ago, months ago, however long it was. Um, I just remember that, yeah, every time that we've come into like this emotional state uh, about a decision to make, Todd, you've been the one with the logic and the heart uh, that kind of brought us back to earth. Um, and yeah, come, going, going to eat with Todd Yuzuria is exciting. <laughs> he, he can he can make a happy hour uh, a small plate sound like the most amazing thing in the world. <laughs> and it's been great uh, to have your mentorship and uh, your advice over the last four or five years. It's been five years for me, um, and uh, yeah, just to be along the ride with you. Mm. You are the happiest guy I know, and I know some happy people, and I appreciated that as an example of how to approach uh, things. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your service. So I won't talk about food or how <laughs> happy you are. Um, <laughs> oh, you could. <laughs> I personally just, for being the newest board member, um, appreciate everything you have helped me with to help me understand as well as the year I spent on your left side um, when I first started on the board and always willing to answer questions for me, never making me feel like I should know things or that I'm bothering you. And I just appreciate the way you do settle the rest of us and you kind of hold us all together. Um, so thank you. Thank you for everything. I am sad that I didn't get to spend more years like everybody else getting to know you better, but I do appreciate the year that I had and look forward to more. Yeah. Not as a board member, obviously, but I'll be as a friend. Yeah. <laughs> He's found to be a Thank performance you. at a school still, right? Oh, yeah. You'll oh, yeah. still be around, oh, Todd. Yeah. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> He's stuck. We'll be at Image on um, Tuesday, a week from now. Huh? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, Todd, we got you a little something from the board, a little party. <laughs> And guess what it involves? I don't know, but... It looks like food. It's not music. Wow, a lot of stuff. Uh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll consume this, uh, and thinking, we'll be thinking of you. So yeah, thank you very much. You're, you're welcome. But that's not all. <laughs> okay. You are a family of artists. And as it happens, so is my family, amateur artists, all of them. And uh, most of them have gone into music, but one of them went into uh, graphic arts. Uh, I don't know if you've ever met my oldest, Rachel, uh, but when, when uh, we thought about and talked about the, your service on the board and, and the way that you interact with the kids, the thing that comes to mind is the most enthusiastic and the most heartwarming is the Vancouver Pops, that, that's the name, right? Vancouver Pops, the Minidoka Swing Band, and the performances. Uh, and so I, I had my daughter, uh, I commissioned her to do a little work of art for you. Really? Which is kind of emblematic of that. And we want you to have this with our things. Wow. It's a bag? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, nice. oh. You went as far as really asking cool. me what music should I put there. So no. that's uh, that's Doc Severinsen's arrangement of Glenn Miller's in the right. mood. <laughs> awesome. One of my favorites, and you don't have to keep the bag. But awesome. <laughs> thank you again. Yeah, thank you very much. That's great. I thought you captured your backside pretty well. <laughs>
But it's, it's inspired by a photograph that uh, Community Relations took and published. It isn't, it isn't a duplication of the photograph, but it's, it's that idea of performing for kids that she really, I thought she captured really well. Yeah, yep, it depicts my best side. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. Mm. So I don't think we have anything else, and it's all about Todd tonight. No. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, so we will move on to future agenda items. Todd, do you have any? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone have anything they want to add? Okay. All right, next we will move on to citizen comments. At this time, if there's anyone in the audience that would wishes to address the board, uh, you have three minutes, and it cannot be personnel or legal in nature. Uh, looks like we have one person that has signed up, Bill Bevel. Hi, Bill. Hi, how are you? If you'll give us your name and address, please. Yes. I'm trying to set a good example. I'm talking about how to do this right. Okay, my name is Bill Bevel. My address is 1004 Northwest 43rd Street. And I, I'm here to address the board about an issue about school safety. Um, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics, uh, the usual, the typical to the general public incident of a non-fatal injury is about 7.5 per 10,000 workers. Um, one of the most dangerous professions, police and sheriff's departments, those people that work in law enforcement are subject to about 150 incidents for 10,000 people. We know that logging, fishing linemen uh, have more fatalities, but as far as incidents of injury are, are similar to the norm. Um, I'm here to talk to you about the most dangerous job in Clark County, which currently is an SLC teacher in the Evergreen School District. Um, as far as per incident, closer to net nurse practitioners and those people that work with people that are a little bit, that have um, mental difficulties. Um, I, I, they come to me and I talk to them and they email me, they contact me on the phone. Today I talked to a teacher that was home waiting for a doctor's appointment um, because she has kidney problems because she doesn't get to the bathroom enough. Um, this is a, a serious thing. Um, there's, we're really having problems with support. Uh, we're, while our SLC teachers have been patiently waiting for us, for the admin, even for their union to help them out, it feels like their, their calls are falling on deaf ears. Um, we, one of the things I try to do, I bring this up in every labor management, and last month I just wanted to give them lunches and breaks, and it turned into them having to do another task, coming up with schedules that weren't really followed. Uh, the principals are, of course, spread thin, as we know, and sometimes nobody comes to relieve them when they need time for the breaks, let alone the planning time. There, some of the effects are job stress. They're put in high-risk situations daily where the wrong decision can result in them or a student being injured. And many times when there are incidents, they're blamed for the results. Um, there's a huge impact in the loss of learning. The loss of learning amongst the peers, amongst the other students in the SLC classroom, uh, they're making progress that end up progressing because they witness violence and trauma. We, and we know that many of them come with trauma of their own. So as far as next steps, I'm running out of time, but I asked them, I said, what do you, what do you want? What do you want from us? What would you like us to help you with? And one of the things we need to do is make this a priority. It's much more likely tomorrow that an SLC teacher will be injured than there'll be a gunman or somebody coming into our schools or a slip or a fall. They're getting hurt every single day. I've talked to teachers with their hair pulled out, scratches, bites, cuts. Um, it's, re it's really pretty shocking. Uh, the thing they want really is for us to listen to them, to take their input seriously. They don't want to be handled person by person. A lot of times this comes with, well, give me a list of people, 
and they try to handle each one of them, but they're saying it's not really individual incidences, it's the entire system that's putting us in these situations for no amount of time. But one of the things is, is that they really need the time to work with their paraeducators. They need relief, they need those paraeducators to be paid to plan with them, that they can collaborate with their peers, that they have time to plan. A lot of times the issue is that they don't know from one day to the next what it is that, that is working because they don't have time to share it. And just in conclusion, I think that we're in a limited window here. We know how, how important this is, how it's been in the press, um, these extreme behaviors in classrooms. And I'm fearful, I'm very fearful that these kids are going to look, be looked at as something that needs to be further institutionalized, when really the caring adults that we have are already working with them. They just need our support to be able to help these students out, these most vulnerable students. And I really think that um, not just our district, but we need to march forward to the state and demand more support for special ed and safety in our classrooms. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Bill. Bill. Thank you, Bill. All right, is there anyone else that did not sign up that would wishes to come up and address the board this evening? Okay, well at this time, uh, the board will go into a recess to sign documents. We will reconvene in a board workshop where we will do budget development, have a board meeting debrief, legislative updates, we'll get another superintendent's update, and then we will go into executive session where we will evaluate candidates for board of director open position district number four. We are now in recess.